joining today's conversation on the news. In my coaching practice, I've been getting loads of questions in one form or another about what do you do with all this bad news coming at you every day? The load of bad news feels overwhelming. Do you have any tips on this? So I thought I'd have a conversation today exploring the news that's coming in, exploring what you can do for yourself in support of yourself being bombarded by news and every direction. So thank you for joining the podcast and I look forward to sharing something useful, helpful, and hopeful. What keeps coming up in a lot of my coaching sessions is people feel they're bombarded by bad news. And then if they feel like they they don't feel like there's they're getting any break from bad news before more bad news comes in, you know, before something else happens and before something else happens. So the question that keeps uh, coming up is like, well, what do you do with all that? What do you do with um, uh, the news that you hear about in the periphery, the news you, from wherever you get your news source, just how do you have more, these are my words, not the questions that were asked, but how do you have more peace with all this bombardment of news over and over and over and over and over. And because of, I believe because of all of the news sources, because of all of the social media, because of how many sources we have that is hitting us with information all the time, it's very different than, you know, sitting down for the whatever, 1030 news once a day, or, or picking up a newspaper and getting a dose a day and then moving on. Do you notice that it's like, now it's like constant. It's like a ticker feed on the stock market. It's not, there's no real breaks in it. Even, you know, if you're in conversation with people, something comes up more times than not that it's not uh, an invited topic. And more times than not, it's about people you really would never sit down and (laughs) <laughs> to dinner with anyway, but they somehow get a seat at your table. <laughs> yeah. And so I find that so fascinating that it just keeps coming. So it just keeps coming. So that's what I thought I'd talk about, about what do you do? I mean, what can each of us do to take better care of ourselves while the new sources are coming? So the first thing that came to mind, which is screamingly obvious, but I think it's something to note, is uh, wherever you get your news, is it factual? Is it true? You know, do you, do you feel like it's a, a source of information that has credibility for who you are in the world, your values, how you see the world? You know, I always kind of think it's interesting about uh, what gets put in front of us is, from my perception, that it's very different from journalism to what comes at you today. You know, purity of journalism and what, what, it just seems like so much, so many things have a slant. So I say, if you want to be in touch with, if you want to be in touch with the news, if you want to be able to have a news source that fits for you, find one that's, that aligns with you and find one that fits. And if you're really curious about aligning your life with what's true in all caps, you know, find a source that works for you in that way. And, and discard the rest. Just let them go. And, and, um, I also believe in many times, I'm not a big fan of the news, but many times people go, well, you're in denial or you're, um, you know, you're, you're an ostrich, you put your head in the sand. And I'm like, no, I'm not at all an ostrich, but I don't feel like I get all the news I need. Whether it's a hurricane, it's time to get and go, whether it is, um, um, Just anything I need to know, I feel like I get the information. I either get it from somebody in passing or something occurs to me from the inside. 
that says take action. And so that's what I depend on. I really need to, I don't even really depend on it. I just allow that to be in the flow of my day where my news comes from. And then also there are, are like core things that I care about. And I think each person has core things that they care about. And you can align your news to the core passions that you have. You know, what really matters to you? What the, those types of uh, topics or issues that you would be um, uh, inspired to take action on. And you know what those are, you know, you know, the ones that kind of pull at your, your heart strings or your integrity strings align with those. And then you'll get inspired action on those types of things. But you would, you would see kind of like as a, as a, a sieve, get rid of a whole lot of stuff that's not directly impacting your life, not directly um, a cause that you care deeply about. And maybe you could just distance yourself from so much. You just don't need so much of everything. You could get more of, of what you're passionate about. So the, the next thing too that um, I thought about with the news to me, the news is kind of like, to use the metaphor of like uh, someone with celiac disease or, or diabetes, it's like you can get a feel, they can get a feel for if they've eaten too much gluten or had too, too much sugar in their diet. They can sense it. A lot of them can really sense it in their body or even, you know, a chocolate lover like me, if I've eaten too much or had too much coffee, I have a sense of it. You know, you get a sense of it like, okay, I've ingested enough. I've taken in enough. I better, I better dial it back. So, and that's, that's uh, another way you can get a sense within yourself of if you've had too much input, just too much input from any source. Y'all ever get that feeling like you've just, you're kind of full, you're saturated, but it's not full and saturated in a rich way. It's, mm -hmm. it's just like too much. Yes. So, so that's yeah. a piece, that's a piece to play with. That's a piece to play with. Like, like I said, if you've had too much sugar or too much wheat, it's, it's going to, it's going to mess up your system because mm -hmm. you're out of balance in that one. Mm -hmm. So another piece that I thought would be um, really interesting to talk about in these times where so much stuff is happening. And so this is a question I have for you guys. It's like, do you know you don't have to feel bad for all the bad things that are happening in the world, but you can still care deeply? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, good. Because I think a lot of times people think if they care deeply, they need to carry it. They need to keep it on their mind. They need to worry about it. That, that you know, like that, <laughs> I don't know if in your upbringing this ever came up, but it's like, if I didn't care about you, I wouldn't worry about you. <laughs> and it's like, uh, all well intended, but basically you're pumping fear into, uh, uh, out into the universe. You're not pumping love and, and caring. You're pumping fear. So, so it's like, just to kind of get into that practice too of, First of all, kind of knowing when you've ingested too much. And secondly, if you catch yourself feeling burdened by the, the occurrences in life, you know, what's happening out in the world. If you feel like, truly, if you feel like you want to take action, take action. Check in with yourself and really see 
first of all, is there, do I have any reach or impact on this? You know what I mean? Is it beyond my reach? Now, if it's beyond your reach, that's a sure sign that, that take it off your mind. You don't have to feel bad about it because, but we can feel bad about things we have no control over at all. And it can be very close to home and it can be very global. Very close to home. And I mean very, very close to home. <laughs> and, and really you have to check in on with, with and really do the facts checking in the sense of, do I really have any control over this? Now, if you feel like there's, you could have impact in certain ways, great, act on those ways. But we really can't stop anybody from doing anything they want to do. We can get, in, get involved with causes, you know? We can support, we can write checks, we can do all that stuff. <clears throat> And I want to uh, share that because, again, if we keep too much on our mind, if the the world is not the world is gonna, we're not gonna we're gonna suffer more than the world. We're basically expanding the suffering in the world by carrying it, by keeping it on our mind, and it's so. In, in our innocence and in our misunderstanding, we feel like um, we're caring, compassionate, em empathetic people. And oftentimes, if you're empathetic, you can take on too much. And then it's detrimental your, to your well being, it's detrimental to uh, your experience of life. So just, I've got a couple more points, but in any of that, does anybody have a question or how does that land for anybody? Good. It, it lands as, yeah, <laughs> for okay. me. Okay, good. You know, yeah, good. I, 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 I see it as, you know, what I'm trying to do is not be too engaged with the news mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not, not, and of course, <clears throat> I think it's easier to do the second one if you've done the first one. You know, if you've really disengaged from the excess, oh, got it. Mm -hmm. then you might be less likely to take on too many, too much of the angst about the, you know, about what's going on, mm -hmm. wherever, wherever it's going on. Right, right, right. Makes sense. Makes sense. That, that makes perfect sense. So, um, so once you kind of start to realize that you don't have to feel bad for the bad things in the world, but you can still care deeply, it takes, takes us to another place, which I think is an invitation in these times, because you know, I don't know about y'all. I wish I had a counter for how many times I heard unprecedented, unprecedented, unprecedented. <laughs> Everything is unprecedented. Every new day is an unprecedented day, you know? So what, um, what occurs to me in that is like, okay, I feel like it's an invitation for each of us to take more responsibility for the internal climate that we live in. Now, what do I mean by the internal climate? It's like, you know, what's my uh, feeling state inside me when nobody's around, you know? Because we can, we can look outward and blame a whole lot of things on why I feel the way I feel in any moment. But I think it's almost a, like a, a divining ride. Like if you're in a room by yourself, quiet room by yourself, nothing's going on. And, and, you, and you have to kind of go in and go, wait a minute, there's nobody but me. So uh, I, 
I have nothing to point to. You'll, you'll see that there's an internal climate that we can cultivate within ourselves. Now, but we have to make it a priority. It has to matter to us, the feeling we live in. It has to matter to us. And then we have to get behind it. In a sense of like, we, when I say get behind it, we have to um, make it a priority. So say for instance, like the, I did, I did this recently. I was a, a newspaper, a printed newspaper person forever. Well, just in the last couple of months, I, I canceled my newspaper subscription and the, and the clerk goes, I, I don't understand. You've been a subscriber forever, you know? And I said, well, you know, it just occurred to me like every morning when I would sit down to look at the paper. I'd be arguing with the paper on different things. You know, I would see that, that I sat down to the table and I was, I was taking in more upset than I had any impact on. And I was like, this doesn't make sense to me anymore. It just doesn't make sense to me to, to let all of this stuff in that's really not even stuff I'm interested in just be bombarded by it. And so she said, why would you cancel? And I said, well, you know, it just occurred to me that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of checking my, what's the news that's coming in. And I said, I look at the paper and it looks like it's all bad news. And it doesn't make sense to me to pay to have bad news delivered to my house. I said, <laughs> <laughs> and she, she started laughing. She goes, Oh, well, I can't really argue with that. I was like, okay. So <laughs> we just moved on from there, but it, it just came really clear. I'm like, if this is the way I start my day, do I want to sit down there of all of the materials that are available to us to, to ingest, to, to support our day and living in the feeling I want to feel more, which, you know, for me, it's like, I want to feel more peaceful. I want to feel more hopeful. I want to feel more inspired. I don't want to feel defeated. And, and I found myself every time I read the paper, it was like, if, if I read more and more story about a child that's been neglected, you know, if I hear one more story about dot, dot, dot. So that's what I mean about really tending your internal environment and making it a priority because that's where you live. That's, that's where you live and everybody lives in their own internal environment. So, so like in that place, it's like, um, when we start to realize we can monitor, limit, whatever you want to say, even select, be more selective about what we, our intake, whether it is gluten, whether it is sugar, uh, whether it is news, whether it is content, you know, what kind of content do you, are you going to allow yourself to take in? Now, Do you know that when we're kind of making our internal climate a priority, do you, do you know that it's completely on the offer and, and an invitation and permissible and invited to give your mind a rest? Just give your mind a rest. Give your mind a rest from in, intake, 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 intake all the time. We're kind of in a culture that says, man, I'll get behind. I'll miss something. Uh, I'll have FOMO, you know, fear of missing out. I'll, um, you know, it's not good. It's not good to A, take a break, much less take my, take my eye off the target. But that's something I'd invite you to do. If, if, if your internal climate, once you see that you have participation in that, it's nobody else's responsibility but yours. 
and that you can stand in front of it and make it a priority versus just feeling defeated or victimized by what's happening in the world. And in that space, you can give your mind a rest for no good reason. Now, now in order to give your mind a rest, I think it's, you got to see what's the benefit of giving your mind a rest. What's, what's the benefit of like being more selective on intake? What's the benefit of um, making your sense of well-being a priority? So this is the deal. If your mind is less burdened with all of this stuff, you're gonna have so much more inspiration that comes into you. And from new ideas, fresh solutions, um, things that occur to you that you had no, you'd never seen before, that's where solutions to like these war, the world's problems are gonna come from, from fresh ideas from inspired ideas. And, and when we start to really get the association that a freer mind, a mind that gets a chance to rest, creates space for inspiration. Not grinding on, not grinding on the problem, letting the mind rest, creates space for fresh inspiration. Have y'all noticed that in, in just in your own world, like if you've just taken your eye off the ball, whether it's vacation or taking a shower or taking driving a car or whatever it is for you where you kind of take, take your eye off, the t off some target and you've given your mind a rest, how your internal state of being improves. Because hopefully, hopefully you will see that the, the, um, the less burdened, the less intake in, rises your experience of life. It improves your experience of life. It's kind of like those, the scales of justice, you know? It's like they're going to teeter, teeter, teeter. But it's like intake, less intake, a richer experience of life. And then don't take inspired action. And then the other part that I think is so, so important to this is like, if you feel, if your internal environment is fuller, richer, so here's the deal. It's like, so we're going to go out into the world at some point in time, maybe it's, whether it's physically on Zoom, by phone, whatever. So if your internal environment is of a richer felt sense for you, when you go out into the world, you're going to make a different ripple, a different contribution to the whole than if you go out agitated, if you go out uh, overwrought, if you go out with too much, too much concern and burden on your mind. You're going to have a shorter fuse. You're going to be less tolerant. And that's another place where we can take responsibility for offering up, making a deposit of goodwill out in the world. And it's not over, not only for the world, but you'll feel better for it. And it, you'll make a very different ripple, kind of like throwing a rock in a very still lake. You'll have a very, very different ripple. Now, the other part about people say, well, if I don't think about it, I'm not going to get any fresh ideas on how to solve these problems. And it's like, no, you let your mind rest. You basically handed the baton to a higher source of intelligence versus what you're carrying within your own brain at this time. And it can be easier you can be much easier than burdening yourself by grinding on something because you're going to use familiar materials to grind on a solution. If you give it up, again, let your mind rest. We, 
a human being and every human being can receive fresh insight, fresh ideas, fresh inspirations. And typically when you, inspiration comes and you move with it, it's, it kind of has momentum when it comes. You're not having to, um, it kind of moves and carries itself. It, I've heard it say it's kind of like uh, inspiration can come in walking. It has legs and it's walking. You're not, ha not having to force it or I should do it. And, da, 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 da. and then from that, again, it's an opportunity to make a contribution from a, a, a very, I don't know if this is really a way of saying it, but a higher minded place versus a suffering place. So I've um, put a whole bunch out there and I want to just check to see what was in the chat. Excellent. Excellent. So we've got uh, in the chat, it says someone gets the digital version of the paper and they get a rundown by email each morning and you choose if you want to check the paper or not. That's brilliant. But right there, there's a, 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 a very common sense way of sieving the intake, you know, allowing it to come at a pace that you can digest. So does anybody have any questions or anything about, or anything that stirs questionable in your own mind? Yes. I'll just say that I get this little free newsletter on, um, electronically from the New York Times. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> they've set it up so that all of the, you know, the, they're just these little short paragraphs about, you know, maybe 10 main stories and, and then some lighter stories. And you can't read the whole thing unless it's related to coronavirus. They've made the coronavirus articles free because, you know, as a public service for, you know, because they know everybody wants to know that. And, you know, that to me is a real, I can go through that little newsletter mm -hmm. and feel like I'm reading I'm I'm learning just the a little bit more than what I would get by reading the headlines, and <clears throat> uh, you know if it's about the coronavirus, I can choose to look at the whole story, which I do from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you know that, and and I can tell myself that's enough. I don't need to know all of the details. Oh, some, somebody rioted, somebody did this, that, or the other. Or, or, and especially if it's about some country on the other side of the world, you know, I can choose that, I, you know. And there have been times when the story's been intriguing and I've been tempted to just click that thing that says, oh, only a dollar a week you can subscribe. And I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, don't do that, Linda. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, because the, then I would want to read more, and I do discover that, uh, you know, a lot of the stories that I have read via those links are from, uh, they're from the Times or they're from the Post, the Washington Post, or for, from some other source. And oftentimes, then in my Chronicle, which I do still get in paper form, uh, I'll, the same story will be will be in the in the local paper. So it's like, you know, you really don't have to look at all of this stuff. It's going to be everywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I may, sometimes I do feel like I have my head in the sand, but, you know, I'd rather have just a little bit of knowledge about all of this stuff. And as long as I'm, you know, taking care of knowing about, you know, I do want to know what's the latest about the precautions I need to take or what's the latest if there's a hurricane on the way. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I don't, I, I'm like, I'm real happy not to have all that stuff. I mean, my brain is cluttered enough as it is. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I think everybody wants to, uh, maybe not everybody, <clears throat> can't say everybody, but I certainly feel like if people knew they could live in a more inspired feeling, they'd take it. If they knew that that was their natural state of being and they didn't have to get things right get things in place and then I'll feel freer. Then I could feel more inspired. It 
I promise you the offers on the table now, you know, it's, it's, it's not one of those as seen on TVs. You have to do it in the next five minutes to receive this special offer. It's always on offer to, to find that a more peaceful, restful place within yourself, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the circumstances. And if you have things to me, if you have things you really want to, put your conscious awareness on you have things that matter to you and you, you really get clear. It's like, man, if I had an hours of an hour time, what would I do with it? What's on the top of my list? And you really weeded off the other stuff that you didn't have to do the stuff that, you know, the stuff that eats your time. And again, shave that step away and put that one hour onto something that you're passionate about. It's a game changer. You're going to feel fuller in your own life. That's going to be a contribution to your internal climate. But we, we, we don't know we can give ourselves permission to say, mm -mm. you know, push away from the table from, you know, conversations that go south on topics you don't want to listen to you know it's like <laughs> we don't give ourselves permission it's like you know guys i love you to death but I'm, I'm not i'm not showing up for this i'm not interested in this no harm no foul but i'm not signing up and really to take responsibility for your internal climate because your own intuition your own inner wisdom will help you It'll, it'll alert you. Like when you get clear, like that's a total waste of my time. Total waste of my time. I'm not even interested in that. It will support you in looking away from it. And then you'll feel better, more solid, more grounded, more hopeful, more resilient. And that's our natural state of being. When we're freer minded, our default setting, is hopeful, resilient, inspired. No special circumstances. I think that's really great news. If I was, we we're going to talk about news, that would be the good news. That's good news to, to, to my inner sense of well-being, that that's my default setting. I don't need to lose 10 pounds. I don't need to double my yoga. I don't need to, all this for me to to feel hopeful, resilient, and peaceful. So well, cool. If anybody has any questions, I'd love to hear them or any topic that you'd like to, to even have a conversation on. We can open the floor. Yes. I think I kind of get sucked into the news, you know, sure. because it's so, because it's so, uh, uh, I, I don't know why it's not the good because it feels good, but I'm just like, Oh, what's happening now? You know, what, what's happening now? And, and also when, when you talk about, uh, and then, uh, taking care of my, or, or being responsible for my internal environment. I mean, that sounds really good. And, but I think what comes up for me and, you know, I don't know how is, you know, like there's not going to be, uh, uh, there's something uh, that I, I get uneasy about being uh, um, uh, my mind being clear. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's very common. Yeah. That's yeah. very common. That's yeah. very common because all of that, I'll say a, a, a burdened mind or a busy mind is very familiar. You know, almost like having white noise in the background or music or something like that. And, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of funny when you, you people who aren't used to being in silence, how they react to silence. And it's kind of, the, it's kind of the same thing where we're, we're so familiar with sound and, and again, input and distraction and habit, all innocent, all innocent 
but but you can hopefully start to wake up to about oh wait a minute right what if we make our internal environment a priority will we have now given our mind a job you know kind of like if we wanted that red car we're gonna go our, our mind's gonna start looking for the red cars on the road so if we really kind of launch that inquiry like wait a minute what is on my side of the line of taking responsibility for my internal environment your inner wisdom you'll be doing something and it's like something will wake you up life is a one constant opportunity to wake up so you might just you know be be i don't know i know people who habitually just when they wake up they turn on the tv because it's just part of the it's a habit it's not good or bad i'm not saying any of this is good or bad i'm just saying any kind of habits where we are are we doing it consciously or am i just doing it so in that place of like just getting more conscious about what we're doing not sleepwalking so much I, I promise you that if, if more people knew that if they had space available in their mind, what would fill that space would be inspiration, compassion, hopefulness, resilience. That's what would, that's, it's almost like one of those, uh, uh, it's like a vacuum, you know, you take something out and something else fills that spot. Maybe it's kind of like those bank tubes, you know, that you, <laughs> So, so if it, if you take something out of the mix, if you if you knew inspiration is on offer, that first bit of booga booga of oh God, what is it? And I don't know what it is. It's like that'll go, that'll go. If you really knew, you could you could get beyond your habit, and inspiration would show up. but it makes perfect sense why you can be uncomfortable stepping outside of our habits. Very, that makes perfect sense. Does that help? Yeah, yeah, it's, and, I, and all of this makes sense to me. You know, I, and I've, you know, talked about, talked about this just in the recent past about being responsible for, you know, what I, what I, my internal climate, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, it, it it all makes sense. It's just you know that, um, yeah. Those are just the things that that come to mind. Like, and oh yeah, and then am I going to have to follow those inspirations? And then am I going <laughs> to, you know, I don't know. I could be getting myself into, you know, I, you know, I'm used to whatever I'm used to, you know. So what what's going to happen if I get outside that, you know? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. yeah, yeah. 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 What if my inspiration doesn't have legs? You know, maybe it's a lazy inspiration, just lays down after it shows up, you know. But what if you really <laughs> understood, really understood that the that the wisdom that gave you that inspiration will give you the next steps. It's not up to you. It's not up to this. Hmm. Well, well, but I, well, I mean, I'm thinking I'm thinking I got to engage. You know, oh, you have to engage, sure, participate with the inspiration, sure, okay. absolutely. Yeah. But you don't have to figure it out, you know. You don't, okay. again, that's one of those things you don't have to take the burden on of making it happen. If you know that once you've been, you've gotten an inspiration, your creative process basically has been enlisted, it's like you'll never be given an inspiration where the next steps won't come. But you got to make sure you step over all the all that uh, poo poo from our habits that says you're gonna have to do something with this. This is gonna you're gonna have to it, me, 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 it. all that is the poo poo we have to step over to keep our mind clear and our hearing sharp for the next step. And if you really saw that, like, if you really saw it like gravity, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be so susceptible to all the, the you know, poo-poo bombs on the road. 
and we would probably step over them rather than step in them. And all of that's completely <laughs> innocent too. All that's innocent. That's a good news. Any other questions or anything? No? Well, I can't thank you enough for coming to the conversation. I appreciate it very much. It's always a pleasure to connect with you and it's always a pleasure to share what's stirring out in, um, in, in my universe and hopefully it offers something of in contribution to us just being softer and more compassionate with our humanity, that we're not the problem we think we are, that we really get an understanding that we're not broken, we don't need to be fixed. A little understanding is helpful, but we're in, a, we're in a perfect system that works on our behalf all the time. Cool, cool. All right, well, thank you guys. Thank you for listening to today's conversation on news. I hope you found useful information that will support you in starting to really take responsibility for your internal environment and living a more inspired life. If you'd like to work together, I'd love to connect with you. Send me an email at sherryray.com. We can have a conversation and see if working together makes sense. My work focuses on really living more inspired, having a greater understanding of how we all operate, and really enjoying this beautiful life that we've been given. I'd love to connect with you. Thanks again for listening. Mm -hmm.